Hello? You will have it available for, uh, for you later, as well as um, if you need the actual presentation itself, we will be happy to share that. So Kaylee, why don't you get us going? Awesome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Innovation Works Community Bond Info Session. Just a quick walkthrough of what to expect today. We are going to go through who we are, our impact, the overall investment opportunity, a financial snapshot, and then we'll get to the end for some questions as well. So, Lori, if you want to take it over. Sure. Can you hear me okay still? No. I'm going to take my off. Yes, you can? Yep. It's a little low, but... I have someone live in person with me, socially distanced from me, uh, that's uh, with me. So I'm on uh, the computer speaker. That's why I'm asking. Thanks, Kaylee. Thank you so much for helping us put this together. The enthusiasm has been amazing. So why are you here? You're here because we know that you're interested in positive community impact. I know that either I've invited you personally or you had uh, an email come to you or Andre's knocked on your door. You're here because you care about our community. So thank you for caring. We care too. And that's why we are um, really excited about launching this community built bond again this year. It's been five years. This is a new uh, group, a little bit of background and some of the impact that we've created. So Pillar Nonprofit Network is the organization that owns and operates Innovation Works. Pillar is a proven community network builder. It grows stronger each year. It's been in existence for uh, a long time and we've had the great fortune of having some great committed collaborators in our space. And we know that it's not just innovation works the building but it is a place to connect we create opportunities for people to convene all the time and that's been a really um that's how innovation works started we went to the community we didn't do this ourselves we asked the community what do we need and a shared space was what came out loud and clear. So it's a co-working community with nonprofits, for-profits. We offer private offices, uh, desk clusters, private desks. And the really cool part is we have these shared services where people have a common, uh, a common area to come in. We have mailbox services. It's a plug and play. You can bring yourself here and we do all the rest. Um, you're just here not just to... Um, work but also to collaborate with others and that's some of the great impact that we're feeling we know this is a proven model for change it's more than just a shared office the whole idea around innovation works is to bring together the network the not just the people that live in this space and work out of the space but the entire pillar network into this fundamental piece of success is to have that all eyes looking on our community for social impact um, and you know, I think I, I think I can easily say that Innovation Works has become a, a place where Londoners are knowing that this is where we collaborate. This is where creation happens. Um, and while we know that COVID-19 has certainly given us our challenges, we have risen to the occasion by introducing a lot of virtual activities, but also. Um, you, again, going to our network to find out what is needed in moments like this. In terms of what is the future of work, it is clear and the, um, the data supports us that co-working space is on the rise. According to a lot of studies, what we're seeing that in, um, in the years to come, we will see a huge increase in co-working industry. It's set to grow obviously at a slower place as we start into 2020, but will rebound and develop even more rapidly in 2021 and onward. The key here is that the future of work is flexibility. I'm sure you've talked to your friends, your families that are working on their kitchen tables or juggling their kids or having to share an office with a partner. People need people. And we are set up, we are safe, and we are ready to take you on and incorporate a flexible workspace into your own life. And we know that this is the future of work. And I'm going to pass it over to my colleague who, uh, who's also quite passionate, and you'll see this, Andre. Hey, everyone. Welcome. My name is Andre Vachiste. I'm part of the Pillar team here. And so 
Nice to see all your faces um, this morning, this afternoon. Uh, so as Laurie mentioned, Innovation Works is the physical manifestation of a community vision that was born six years prior to opening our doors. And several community groups and individuals gathered to identify and validate a strong need for this social innovation shared space. And I actually came into that story right before the opening as a volunteer. And that's kind of me in the picture uh, a little differently, a little, little a change over time. And I'm actually in the same room, so I can actually show you. I'm actually in the RBC vault right now where that toast was made. And there was a toast of all the first tenants um, that were prepared to enter this building as the co-tenants prior to the opening. And I was lucky enough to be part of that group of people that really uh, shared that vision. And, um, and my role was also to be part of the social financing of the space. And that's where I helped kind of co-create the community bond model uh, with our team and our community. And we're proud to say that in over four years of operations, our members, stakeholders, and community at large continue to inform how this community grows and involves into a place for all. Last year, we saw more than 14,000 people and um, an unspecified number of dogs walk through our doors to participate in hundreds of events, activities, and programs. And I just wanna share a couple of the specific things that we've done uh, with you right now. So in order to create that long-term community impact, animation is key. Um, and we need to ensure that uh, we're creating relationships in this space. And so we do that for a variety of activities. Uh, on the left there, you'll see our salad club, which is very popular. In the middle, you'll see um, our, our wellness days that we do. In the mornings, we have sometimes yoga and other wellness activities. And in the right, you'll see obviously a variety of activities that occur to help um, our community stay engaged. And a lot of those events are co-created by our community. So our uh, animation events are led by our welcome desk volunteers like the salad club, uh, the people who do the yoga, are a lot of volunteers in our community that come in and provide those for free. And uh, we also have, try to have a yearly barbecue, uh, which we didn't do this year um, given COVID. We also have a holiday party and we try to do other kind of networking events uh, to help kind of spark those relationships and um, create a set of long-term outcomes. And so um, I wanted to just, yeah, throw in a fun video to uh, show the rolling of um, the pillar team from the library we used to operate into the Innovation Works. So let's take a pause for this fun moment of the day where we rolled over to Innovation Works. Check it out. This is the, the pillar team crossing King Street <laughs> um, on that faithful day, you know, it's a, a bit of a ceremony of, you know, transitioning our community to a new location. Um, and that was like, yeah, almost six years ago. And oh, someone's left behind. Oh. Someone's coming back. I think Michelle, she ends up going to the front and the back and making a loop. And so um, the final kind of piece I wanted to share was just some specific projects that we've worked on. So, um, you know, based on the fact that it, we are community created, we're created by the community for the community. Uh, we typically look at what are the trends and forces shaping the nonprofit sector or the for purpose sector, if you want to call it. We did a be inclusive series where we had topics that talked about, you know, um, uh, the LGBTQ community, um, had conversations that were managed, like they were led by our black community and other communities. We had local indigenous learning series, equity inclusion conversations, policy conversations, meetups. So these are kind of the topics that we've been really uh, focusing on to help pro like foster that innovation we want in our community. And where I've really um, had a really joy of being in, in, in the innovation workspace is working on the collaboration. Uh, Pride London, Green Economy London, Inclusive Economy London, City Studio London, they all have this word London at the end of them. And in the first words, Pride, Green, Inclusive, City Studio is a name that represents a lot of collaboration between a lot of organizations. So in City Studio, the city working with the academic institutions, with Inclusive Economy London, it's about the organizations that want to create an economy that's going to leave no one behind. Green Economy London is about all the businesses that want to reduce their waste and clean the water. And uh, at the heart of that is, you know, trying to innovate processes and products that engage diverse perspectives, that foster creativity for transformational change, that shares organizational assets and talents, builds partnerships and creates jobs. And I'm gonna hand it over back to Lori. Thanks, Andre. I remember that fateful day going across that. We're hoping that we weren't gonna get hit. And it was so much fun and little did we know what was gonna come from this. And I just wanna talk again a little bit more about some impacts that we've had. Um, we call them, you know, um, uh, collisions, collisions of creativity. Uh, we share a lot at 
Innovation Works, um, assets, talents. We've done things like social innovation days, um, failure workshops. Who talks about failure these days? And you don't, you, you, we don't just feel failure, we feel it and learn from it. And we give ourselves permission. And it's not just staff, it's all inclusive. And everyone um, starts having those conversations because that's where innovation lies. That's where the seeds of innovation are, is, is in risk, is in trying things. And what a bold, bold thing that it was to, to even get this on off the ground. Um, just as well, we noticed that we have jobs and opportunities. We now have a full-time coordinator that works in our building, Andrew. Uh, we keep him busy, but he is watching the eyes and ears of everything that happens from the physical aspects of the building. Um, we hire on a regular basis uh, youth from Youth Opportunities Unlimited, Collège Boreal, March of Dimes. These are staff that run through the programs within the organizations and learn real life skills, um, working skills, day skills, uh, social skills when it comes to workplaces and takes them on to um, other workforce. We have a fantastic volunteer program where volunteers spend four hours weekly at our welcome desk. You might've seen them on your way in. And um, in exchange for their own uh, ability to work in this space. So it's a win-win for all. Um, the next slide was really about, if you think about some of the work we do, over a thousand people since we've opened have participated or participated in our social entrepreneur chats. This is an open forum weekly that people come to, it's now virtual, and talk about their social enterprise. What kind of business are they going to create? that will create impact in the community. And it's so amazing to watch the feeding, the feeding frenzy of ideas that happens in these conversations is remarkable. Um, we have uh, a Libro incubator uh, with social enterprise. This is one-on-one -on -one coaching, 12 cohorts a, uh, uh, every six months and supports with also leads into financing solutions because we do also run a financial arm at Pillar um, that gives them insight into uh, social finance that Andre talked about earlier. Um, certainly, did we increase new jobs created in connection with social enterprise? By you having this incubator, we've seen indicators four or five, probably most of them surviving um, beyond a year or two years. Um, partnerships, man, does this cr place create partnerships, academic partnerships. And one of the greatest ones that I think that we, we've really stepped up in and into is the, uh, ec the, um, the economic uh, network. So uh, we work closely with uh, Fanshawe and Western, their entrepreneur programs, London Economic Development Center, Small Business Center, and Tech Alliance. This is a, a network of supports for entrepreneur no wrong door anyone can come to all of them and we all help them in specific ways the other piece um, again workshops that we do a lot in terms of um, you know what is social innovation what is social finance bringing people into the realm of what is possible when we all care and create impact outside of these walls that's really really key um, some of the numbers on the next slide at a real high level, what happens when you bring 500 members from across all the sectors? Well, that's where the magic happens, but it doesn't happen by itself. It requires energy. It requires human beings from Innovation Works and Pillar that are able to ignite these connections. And when you're looking at over 375 individuals, or organizations over the course of the years working out of Innovation Works, you better believe some of them are really, really keen to also participate. A um, lot of volunteer hours. And if you think of some of the workshops that Pillar holds within Innovation Works, you were looking over 4,000 um, attendees over the course of one year alone. That was when we were physically located. The numbers are coming up very close, even in the virtual. So there's some magic that's happening that's beyond the walls. And, um, but you know, it's not just about what we're saying. We're gonna just sit back. These are very short videos, 20 to 30 seconds. We want you to hear what others are saying as co-tenants here at Innovation Works. So go ahead, Kaylee, grab a drink while you watch these, and uh, this is what they're saying. Oh. 
Oh, she's quiet. Gilly, I think you might have to unmute to get another the audio to come through. Just rewind that. I was on mute. On uh... community is a, re uh, a collective of, in this case, like people and organizations com coming together in one place. And uh, even though each person, each entity has its own goals, as a community here, we have one goal, which is to embrace each other, to help each other, to know each other as a business and to share the same space under the same values. Community to me, community is one of my core values as well. And I think for me, it's that idea of people coming together, supporting one another, and just being able to see and appreciate each other for who they are and where they're at. So to me, community is all about networks and about relationships. And that's what Innovation Works is all about too. It's about the relationships among people who are here and are bringing people in from the outside who, who can benefit. Um, so everything comes from relationships. And that's really what, what forms community is those good relationships. A good community has uh, people who trust one another and who are there for one another. And really Innovation Works is the same way. I know that there's been times when other people who are tenants here um, have picked me up when I've been having a rough time and, and I've tried to do the same as well. I think that's what, that's what a really good community does. I can see it on here. I can see it. One. So if I had to describe Innovation Works in one word, uh, I would use the word inspiring. Home. Right. Innovation Works Collaborative. Diversity, people from all over, people from any background, from all backgrounds. Um, opportunity. It was a community, but I feel like that's so easy. One word to describe Innovation Works would be character. I think this place has a lot of character. I guess it's just exciting. I would say connection. That I, I, I feel connected to the space. I feel that people, it gives us the opportunity to connect with one another. And it also, as I said, it gives us an opportunity through those connections to, to amplify our efforts and to um, really make a difference. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Kaylee. So you probably ask yourself, okay, how can I be part of this? Uh, some of you already are, and some of you are already you know, connected to the space and to the organization in many different ways. So thank you for all of your contributions to date. And so today, we're going to talk about one more opportunity for you to connect. And for those who are not directly connected to us right now, this is a, you know, a great way to start. Um, so to invest in your community. And that is um, in the opportunity around talking about today is the community bond. Um, so we're going to share with you that our goal this year is to... Um, finance a million dollars, and we did that uh, five years ago. And that bond is coming to maturity um, at the beginning of next year, and we're gonna refinance it for another million. Some of our bondholders have already renewed uh, some of their bonds, and the opportunity is to invest up from $1,000 up to $100,000. Uh, I can also say from my own perspective, I have invested in the community bond uh, in Toronto with the Center for Social Innovation, where we got the model from. And uh, my mother-in-law was invested in, in, the, in, the, in the bond starting out. So I'm not an advisor. I can't tell you to invest or not. Uh, but I can say to you that it's something I, I do believe in in a personal note. Uh, I wouldn't I know, um, be excited about it, share with other people if I didn't believe it in myself. And it's also a great opportunity, not only for individuals. Um, it can also be for an organization. So we have many organizations that are investing some of their dollars um, into this uh, opportunity. And we still have some ways to go. So 
we've reached 60% of our goal. So happy to reach that goal. It's exciting. We also want to reach our $1 million goal. So we're hoping some of you today will be interested in joining that, that, that group, um, whether it be you know, from $1,000 or any, any range between there and uh, up to 100, whatever that may be right for you. And we can also help, always have help follow up conversations with you directly. Uh, but if any time, I'm gonna go through the community bond, the structure and how it works. At any time, you can throw your questions in the chat box and we'll have a conversation at the end and we can field some of those questions as well. So essentially the community bond, the way it works, um, it's a 3% return, uh, rate of return each year. So for example, if you put your $1,000 into the community bond, um, that $1,000 will come to us. We will put that into our um, financing. Uh, the money will be hold, held for five years, the principal, the $1,000 or more. And each year we'll give you 3% interest rate. So in the case of $1,000, it'll be $30 a year. And at the end of the five years, we give you your $1,000 back or your 10,000 or whatever amount you put in. And the, um, it's been successful. So we've been able to produce all of our interest back to all of our current bondholders and we'll be preparing to return all of the principal to those who are uh, not reinvesting and those who have reinvested, they'll just keep their, their money and reinvest it into the next series of, of this bond. Uh, now, the way um, it operates is that the bond is backed by the asset. And the asset in this case is this beautiful building at uh, 201 King Street. And so we um, purchased the building uh, over six years ago. And over that time, the building has accrued in value. And the way it works is that all the bondholders will be put onto the title of the mortgage through a trustee, uh, which we have identified as Davis Martindale, which is um, the organization that will be filed under the mortgage charge. And you will be um, represented by them on the of the bond. Uh, last year we had 45 bondholders. Uh, I think we're at you know, 20, 30 bondholders right now. We have more than 30 right now and we're hoping to have more. And the value of the building has gone up in over the last five years. So uh, it's up to over $5 million, which means we have over $2 million of equity in the space. So, so what this means to you is when the people invested the first time five years ago, the value of all of our financing, the value of the building was about the same. So we could cover off any liabilities if we had to sell the building for whatever reason. In this case there, we have $2 million extra of equity that's not being uh, leveraged right now. And so we're in a, in a better position uh, financially in terms of the asset that's backing this bond. So it's really kind of safe from that point of view. But there's always a little bit of risk in society, as you know. Uh, so the bond terms, to get really, really specific now, is that um, it's being offered by Pillar Nonprofit Network, which is the organization that Backbones Innovation Works. We're selling this bond uh, right now until the end of January, and the closing date is February 1st. The issue date of the bond will be March 1st of 2021, and that will mature five years later in March 1st, 2026. So from that period of March 1st to every year, you'll get a 3% interest rate um, uh, to you as the income. And then the March 1st, 2026 is when you get your principal back. And the purpose of the funds is to ensure that we can continue to create all that positive impact we described to you, uh, connecting social innovators and innovation works within our walls and of course beyond the walls and total offering, as I mentioned, is $1 million. Um, now the minimum investment as I described is $1,000. Uh, $1, uh, it can go any range from 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, up to 100,000 uh, or more. And the annual interest rate is 3%. Um, you will receive that annual interest payment on March 1st, as I mentioned, and the principal will be repaid and the security I, I discussed. Now we have had questions about transferability. Um, the notes will not be transferred without the express consent of Pillar Nonprofit. And we have done it once in the past for someone um, who was more of an, um, in an older stage of their life and they needed to pass that investment on to, to one of their family members and we were able to do that. So that's also available um, on a case by case basis as needed. Um, and so, the last thing I want to show you is a bit of our, our financial snapshot. Um, and so you can get a sense of, you know, how we're projecting um, kind of our, our revenues and our cash flow for next year. Um, so uh, Innovation Works has continued to attract co-tenant members and um, managing our revenues with our expenses. Uh, in 2019, a new elevator was constructed in the building with the 65% of the cost was funded by generous donors and the mortgage was renewed in 2019, which with lower interest rate. Um, we are projecting a decrease in $250,000 in lease revenue in 2020 as a result of COVID. And the good news is government programs and deferral of our mortgage have, for six months have helped us to offset any effect of that lost revenue. Um, so as of October 1st, our mortgage payments have resumed to our lenders. And so if you see the revenue projections for 2021 to 2025, they show an increase as we continue to emerge from the effects of the pandemic while focusing on acquiring new tenants and good expense control. So we anticipate being cash flow positive in 2023 with minimum cap, minimal capital expenditures anticipated over the five years with the likelihood of them being leasehold improvements for new co-tenant members. Cause we do like to help new co-tenant members uh, feel welcome in and have their space kind of customized for their needs. Uh, so as I mentioned one more time, the market value of innovation works in 2017 
Um, it, it, sorry, market value is 5.3 million. And as of two mid-year 2020, the equity in the building is 2.2 million. So that's a bit of our, our financial shot, snapshot. Um, so now we just want to throw it over to you for questions. Um, and I'm going to put a link into the chat box here where you can go and get all the access to this information if you haven't already. Um, and there you can um, subscribe to the bond. Just use a quick subscription form. It's just a quick couple of details. You can get the form and then we will begin to process that that uh, relationship. It's not even, a, I would say it's not even a, a payment or a transaction to process that relationship because really we we're trying to create here our relationships with people that uh, want to co-invest in our shared future. Uh, so with that, we're going to share, um, pass it over to you to have any questions or comments so we can uh, see where everyone's at. So anyone want to uh, kick us off? Any questions or comments? You can unmute yourself and there's also uh, possibly a raised and function, and you can also use the chat box. You can write anything in the chat box if you'd like. So, uh, and if you wanna go old school and just like put your hand up like this, and I, I can try and see you, you can do that as well. Um, and, and putting your hand up doesn't mean that you're buying a bond, but we know you're close, <laughs> so it's okay. You can still uh, join us at any time. We do have some questions that um, people have asked uh, that we'll, we'll uh, I could start with. So your, uh, your, interest is every year so every year you'll get that three percent return on march um, with that comes a bond report so you we tell you about the impact and um and the things that have gone on as well as the financial snapshot year over year so you get that every year that's something that we uh we're very proud of showing and happy to share the last report um if you are interested we could take that with you um I just, I just seen it i wasn't sure if judith were you trying to ask a question i wasn't sure if uh no okay i wasn't sure i thought i, thought I saw you gesturing so i was going to make sure thank you going um, Lord, to the questions here question is it possible to stop sharing the screen yes yes you can see <laughs> okay. each other in the gallery view okay. again um and I, I did want to shout out to uh, to CSI in uh, Toronto. CSI was our, we called them the mothership for quite a while. For those of you that uh, were around when we created um, uh, Innovation Works, we did a lot of bus tours to Toronto and uh, they were the model of our creation. But we knew that when we came to uh, London, we had to have a London solution. So very, it's a different model because Toronto's students all go back to Toronto, whereas ours come here during the school year. So it, it was something that we had to kind of make our, turn our heads around. And uh, it's been working. We got a lot of great uh, involvement with students. One of the uh, few of them on the call, Ali and Julia, uh, all started as volunteers here. Um, and Ali, uh, actually her interest was uh, around uh, fund development. So we've got her working with us for that. And Julia's at Ivy right now, doing uh, um, working with uh, the whole social finance so this was a great um, great introduction for her so really uh, work really well with the um, with students to help them Andre we have a few questions in the chat box do you want to take them sure Ken so one of the questions was from Christine um, is it TFSA eligible, which is the tax-free savings account. People will also ask if it's RRSP eligible, so, um, those two um, kind of financial mechanisms that we have access to in our banks typically. Uh, so the community bond is not eligible for TFSA at RRSP as a whole. You can always ask your bank, maybe your financial advisor, if they're willing to uh, put the community bond within that, that um, structure. Currently, the bond as a whole is not um, eligible. And a simple reason for that is just because of um, the size of the million dollar kind of bond is it's very community based, very grassroots based in terms of like local London community. When you talk to banks, they're looking at like large products that would fit into those uh, structures. Um, however, you know, um, it still um, fits within, you know, an investment portfolio, if you will, because it does um, fit within that idea of a bond, which is more of a, a a structured investment where you know kind of each year how much interest you're going to be getting so if you're trying to structure within your portfolio of investments this one provides a lot of consistency whereas other uh, investments in your portfolio might be a little bit more uh, fluctuating based on the market conditions whereas ours is a very structured product so that's how you differentiate where this would fit into your uh, portfolio and then and had i gotten another 
um, question. Um, someone asked about T forms. So I believe right now Davis Martindale is uh, our accounting firm that works with us. And so they help us um, process all of our financial reports around the bond on a yearly basis and ensure that everyone gets um, their uh, investment income uh, with that annual return rate with the 3%. And the other question was, um, is the bond connected to the Deshkan ZB project, which is a conservation impact bond project that we do um, with Carolinian in Canada and other stakeholders. And the product itself is not connected to that project. However, the principles are really about community investment. So how does our community come together and invest into uh, community projects? So that local investment for local impact. And so one of the programs we run called Verge Capital was the investor in that um, project and that investment came from 20 investors that pooled together uh, so what makes the difference in the verge capital context with that fund is that you invest in that fund and then verge capital will invest in a variety of projects with the community bond all the investors are invested in one project which is innovation works uh, via pillar nonprofit network um, so the um, short answer is it's not connected but it's, yeah, short answers, it's, yeah. it's still in the same family but it's a different um i'll take cousin. the next one yeah the cousin the cousin we like to talk about uh, I would, um, I'll take the next one, Andre, about the support of rural regions outside of the city of London. Pillar as a whole definitely has um, been pulled into a lot of directions in terms of advocacy policy um, for the sector and for uh, social innovation. Um, we definitely participate in um, social finance. Andre does a lot of work on the provincial level as well. And um, certainly Michelle Baldwin from a, um, you know, tapping into uh, federal um, uh, links as well. Um, our impact area is definitely London and surrounding for sure. Um, but it's not to say that we don't get pulled out um, into other areas outside of the London region. Uh, but Innovation Works right now is uh, definitely, it's located in London. Pillar Nonprofit itself um, gets, gets a lot of uh, uh, connections uh, provincially and federally as well. Uh, next question, uh, Andre, about the cash flow, seeing that mortgage principal payments go down in 2020 and then back up in 2021 as the result of deferred payments in 2020, or is it due to reduction payback of debt in 2020? So, yeah, as, as described, the way that we were able to manage um, the principal payments is that we were able to get a six-month deferral um, that helped us offset some of our costs in the course of 2020. Um, so that was um, one way that we were able to do that. And the due to reduction to payback of debt in 2020 and new debt in 2021. So the new debt that we're taking 2020, 2021, one of the, the big ones is this community bond. So refinancing this community bond is a way that we're acquiring uh, debt, if you will, to continue managing our cash flows uh, for the foreseeable for the next you know, five years, if you will. Um, that's how we're, we're managing that. Great question from Susan. Why do we need the bond? Is it to support the physical space or for operations or dot, dot, dot? Um, and Andre, I, I want to share the question with you because um, I, I would talk to the community aspect to it. Um, when we first launched the bond in uh, five years ago, it was individuals off the street coming into the, at the time in the library that wanted to be uh, a part of a community movement. And so they took out their checkbook, they wrote a, a check. It was far more the community involvement because you, you, your investment is as low as $1,000. It was more how we got 40 plus community members to invest in a, uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at the time, it was just a concept. We didn't even have the building. So to see the excitement of community coming together to help produce, the type of impact that after five years has been created, um, you know, was really uh, just an incredible show of um, connection before we even opened the doors. Does it help us leverage debt? Absolutely. With a million dollars at 3%, it helps us leverage other debt. Um, and it's not directly related to operations, whereas it's, it's related to the way we actually set up the, 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 um, uh, the lending in the portfolio for innovation works that is creative and is innovative and it allows everyone in the community to have a piece of it. Andre, do you want to add to that? Or did I do a good job all by myself on that? <laughs> it's 
Sorry, I was just going back to our, our, our back end data to see how many people actually are invested in the current community bond because I said 20 or 30, and it's, it's definitely over 30. So I just wanted to make I that clarification. I thought it was 40, but yeah. yeah. Um, so big fan of Innovation Works, the team and staff. Thank you, Wayne, count on me for bond. Thank you, Wayne, uh, given the risk compared to the crazy speculative markets. Yes, um, you know, I again, we're not financial advisors. We can't uh, do that, but... I just remember always thinking of my dad way back when he said, Lori, real estate is real. <laughs> so it always kind of stuck to me in that, in that um, scenario. Um, and, you know, honestly, you just need to walk in Innovation Works. And I have a guest here that's live and in person, Gavin. Do you have any questions, Gavin? You're good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Any other questions out there through the chat or? Or live and in person. We definitely wanted to make this uh, available for you. It will be recorded. It is recorded, so it'll be available playback. Um, yeah, I guess just uh, in typical innovation works pillar style i would love to uh if you could just type in how you feeling after this presentation uh hopeful happy joyful hungry whatever it is can you just type into the chat how you're feeling after hearing this i just have a quick one um it was in the chat but you know given COVID 19 and well here i am in in toronto i'm you know we're in the red zone and in, in lockdown and um, you know, maybe there's this trend of working from home, but you know, that doesn't necessarily replace community. I'm just wondering how you're navigating through some of those both societal transitions of working from home or working remotely and what it means to be a community, you know, sort of post pandemic. Yeah, great question, Wayne. Um, we have done a lot of work with other co-working spaces across the country. In fact, when you uh, are uh, a co-tenant of Innovation Works, uh, we have a pan-Canadian passport that you can work at uh, any of our um, partners across at, from Vancouver to Ottawa to Halifax. And we are definitely always in touch. Uh, we meet weekly and bi-weekly with two different uh, groups of co-working spaces to uh, talk about these very issues. In terms of the work from home, again, I, I, the trend tells us and people are telling us. We used to say, how do we get to those people that work from home and want to change things up and come into a place? We don't have to do that anymore. Everyone's working from home. And so the audience just grew tenfold for people that, um, and organizations that don't want bricks and mortar anymore. They have the ability to take an office and have their staff rotate in. And it really is the perfect scenario because you, it's the flexibility. And we believe too that employers are recognizing that flexibility is one of the key retention points in their organizations. If you can offer someone flexibility in their workday, um, you, you've, you've just offered them a piece of their life, right? It, and it, it becomes personal. So I hope that answered the question, Wayne. It did, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions out there? Thank you and, for your comments. And just know, I, I, did, I put back the link in the, in the chat box for those of you who are looking for it. And there has a whole bunch of the Q and A's, has links to the investor overview, the term sheet. So if you want to share this with a family member, or if you want to share it um, with someone that you want to get an opinion on this with, all those documents are there to make really user friendly, or read, friendly to read and to look over with somebody else if you want to get a second opinion, or just share, you know, hey, I'm doing this thing, you know, you should check it out. Uh, those are all there for you to, to help you with that, that process. So where are we at? We are at about just over 60% to our 1 million. And so I did confirm, you're right, Lori, it is over 40 um, individuals and organizations that have invested. So our volume of people involved this year has increased, uh, which is exciting. And uh, there's a lot of room for, for more people to be involved. Yeah, so you can help fill that, that chart of the building up to all the way to green. 
and get us to our million dollars. And, and, we, and um, we can't promise real fireworks, but I'm pretty sure when that reaches the top of the building, there'll be a digital fireworks. There'll be some like a picture with fireworks at the top of it. <laughs> I know we did that five years ago. We had like some confetti come out of the building in the virtual world. All right, so. let's do that. I, um, I would say to um, any other questions, just one more. I, I would say, um, I'm just going to, and Andre, I know you, you and I use this all the time. One of the greatest quotes that we've had from an investor uh, is uh, Terry Zavitz, and she's okay for us to use this. Terry's been a fan of Pillar and Innovation Works for a long time and um, an avid community um, partner in many ways. And the way she put it was, it was the only investment she's ever had that she can actually drive by. So we invite you into a minivan, drive by, take a look at your investment at any time, and um, let's stay connected. There was one more question in there. Thank you everyone for the comments as well. Um, from Christine, how many people presently use the space that have invested? And I'm not sure if we have the exact number of like investor to co-tenant um, ratios, if you will. I can say though, many of our co-tenants are also investors. I've also seen people who are, um, previous bondholders were new and also we have new investors who are also who started off as co-tenants uh, so there's definitely a, a relationship there between you know being uh, someone who you know is necessarily big pays to use the space to some degree and then also reaps the rewards of being part of that relationship and I think that's part of the beauty of of innovation work is that you can have many different relationships with the space and with the people it's not just one you don't just come in one hat or one role you can have many so you can be a co-tenant and an investor or you can be a donor or an investor you can be a volunteer and a, and a, and a donor there's like it, the interchangeability of these hats are, are, are welcome uh, because it's all about that sense of, of, of train collaboration and shared identity you're welcome okay going once any other questions from the group wonderful to see third we had 33 of you on today just to listen um, we're happy to run this again if there's other people you want to hear or just connect us I know some of you personally and I know a lot of you professionally and it is a great honor and pleasure to have presented this with my uh, colleague Andre uh, to you all thank you so much yeah, thank you all. And so the final call to action is if you want to subscribe, go to the link, click buy a bond. All you do is put your name, the amount, and our team will follow up with you. And uh, you can be a bond holder. You can be a co-investor in, in, our, in, our, in the space that's our space, our community space. So thank you everyone for being here today.